Hey everyone, in this video we are going to use the free to use 3D modeling application Magic of Voxel to make a 3D model of a sword which you could then use in a game of your creation. So say you're making a game like Minecraft or Roblox or something that has that voxel aesthetic to it, this would fit right in. So let's start off by changing the proportions. So let's come up to the upper right corner here and change this to 30, 30, 40 and you hit enter. You can see it changes the shape. We're going to delete this pre-created object. So control A, so typical Windows soft keys, control A, and then delete. And just a quick recap from what I mentioned in the previous video, right click and hold rotates the camera, scroll wheel zooms in, and then hold down scroll wheel and move the mouse, and that, and that pans around. Okay, so first thing we're going to do we are going to use primarily attach we'll do a little bit of erase but most of this will be attached so that's basically draw even though it says attach and we're going to use most of the tools here but primarily going to use box we're going to use facing and occasionally we'll use the free drawer which is v so let's go ahead and make let's actually turn on the grid first so down here in the lower left We'll zoom in a little bit. Let's make this like a five by five grid. And the reason why I'm using five is because I want to use odd numbers to make sure something can be centered. So if, you, if you're doing even numbers, there is no center. So by doing five, you can leave one on each side and you know whatever is inside of it is centered. So let's raise this up one. So you can either do another box or you can click on facing and just click to raise that one. And then we're going to center in this. Like I said, that's why I use five by five. So we're going to go back to block or box, whichever one, let's say box. And we'll just hold left click and then drag. And it really makes a difference as far as which facing you're clicking on. The only time facing doesn't make a difference is if you're painting because painting paints the entire block. But the other tools, depending on which side you're clicking on, so be very careful. Okay, so let's extend this out. So let's click on facing. And if I left click and hold, I can extend this out. So that's the hilt. So this is just supposed to be like, like an end cap of some kind. I don't know what the proper name for it is. But this is going to be the handle and the hilt. And let's go up one more. And now what we're going to do, we're going to create a ridge on the side here for the hilt. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to line, or we could use the voxel tool, the single one, if we wanted to. But we can draw a line here, and we can draw a line here. Now if we click on this with the facing, we can extend the facing out. If we hadn't done that, this entire facing would have come out. So sometimes a tool may seem like overkill, but with just a slight change, it's what you want. So we can now do facing, and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, oops, I did the very thing I said not to. I clicked down here, got to click up here. You can see it makes a difference. So one, two, three, four, five, six, but there's three in the middle, so uh, it gives us an odd number, it gives us 15. So now I'm actually going to draw the center of the sword first, because when I was practicing, I kept messing this up. If you want, you could make the hilt two, so you could take the, uh, actually we've already got the facing tool, you could do that so the hilt could be uh, even longer. Uh, and you could also, if you want, if you don't want it to be even with the sword, then with, uh, with, the, with the handle, what you can do is you can do the facing this direction. So like I said, clicking on the top, click on the side, two entirely different things. So if I click the facing here, actually that brought everything out. So that's right, because these are adjacent. So what we would need to do, we can just do box then. And I'll leave these little mistakes in because I'm new at this application too. There we go. So it makes it a little bit thicker, more durable. Let's do like a little hand guard here. So let's do line. And see we're drawing underneath. And I accidentally clicked there. So it drew the line there too. Okay. 
There we go. So now we have a handle, a hilt, handguard. That looks a little bit thick, so let's do one more. I'm trying to keep it proportionate. There we go. So now what we can do is, like I said, we want to use center points. So if we do, let's make a single. So if we've got five, what we can do, we can actually make this three deep. So if we take a line, get the center, and we go three deep, we can also give like an edge to this way too. So let's now take facing and we'll just left click and raise that up. And then what you can do, you can extend the facing out this way and this way and then just trim off the top. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll click on facing this way now and this way and we can trim off the top. So let's go to erase and we can use line or V, doesn't matter since it's only three blocks. And now we'll just extend this and this out. So we go back to facing, go back to attach. You probably should have done all the attach first so you don't have to keep going back and forth between tools, but. Let's now delete. So, oops, let's do erase, there we go. So we erase those, erase those, erase those, erase those. There we go. So I've got a good broadsword. Now we can create, like I said, an edge by coming up here. So we could use the line tool now and just do something like not that. Let's go back to attach. So you could do something like that. And let's make a groove down the middle. So we'll go back to erase. We'll do a groove down the middle. And again, since this is three deep, we can do the groove on both sides. And there's still one, uh, there's still one block in the middle. I was going to say pixel. And you could decide for yourself. You might not like this edge. You may just want the flat side. It's purely a matter of aesthetics, purely subjective, what you like. So now we've done all the modeling and now it's just painting. So again, same tools, just a different setting, different mode, I guess you would say. So let's start with like a kind of a goldish color. And again, like I said, it doesn't matter quite as much what tool you use. For painting like this one I could have used facing so facing probably would have been a little bit quicker so let's do that let's go to facing 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 make this all gold and if you want, maybe you want a gem in the bottom so you could change the box red and then you just have like a, a gem there. Now we're going to make the edge. Well, actually, let's do the handle too. Let's grab a brown and let's do facing again. So facing, 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 facing. Okay, so now we're going to use white and grays for the blade itself. Actually, this is kind of stubby. This almost looks more like a dagger, kind of a short broadsword. 
So we can click on a whitish color and let's see, let's do a line and line. Let's see if we could do a line across the top. Yes, we can. Sort of. Interesting. We can kind of do it and kind of can't, so we'll just do that. All right, so now we've got the edge. Now what we can do is the rest of this can just be made gray. So let's grab like a light gray. Eh, let's use that one. And then we can do, let's see if facing, that works out good. And then we'll make this like a darker gray. So kind of like faking a shadow. And we'll do line. And since this is one block, it's already changed on the other side as well. And you could do a few other things like maybe delete these at the very top. So this looks more like an edge. Again, your choice. Let's take a quick look to see how that looks. So let's do erase. And we'll do V. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. Again, subjective, your opinion, whatever you feel looks best for you. There we go. So that should do it. It is certainly not perfect. Like this probably should have been a little bit taller. But a good first effort. So just like that, you have a sword or maybe, depending on the scale, you could use this as like a dagger. And just like that, you have made a 3D model. Now, it's important to note that not only does this export as a 3D model, you can also export as a 2D image. So if you come down here to export, you could do 2D, okay? It'll export it as a PNG, and then maybe you could use that for like an icon or something like that. So uh, you would have the little button that you click to swing the sword. Well, this way, the sword 3D model would look very similar to the 2D representation because you're using the same model. You're just doing a 2D image of it rather than having to redraw it from scratch. So say you have like, again, you have like a button or a toolbar, whatever you want to call it, a skill tray that has your skills. You could use the 2D image of exactly the same model. You also save time as well. So not only do you have the visual consistency, you also save time. You also would want to save this as an OBJ, as an object. And uh, don't forget to save the project as a whole. So that's here. So always remember that you're saving this a couple of different ways. You need to save the source project, which is what we're looking at. But then you also want to export the asset uh, for whatever use it's going to be. So whether it's going to be the 2D image or the 3D model. So make sure you do both. You don't want to lose your work. So... I believe that should do it for this video. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see drawn. Like a lot of other 2D and 3D programs, it's just spending the time and learning those little nuances. Like I said, when you're adding and erasing, it really matters what facing are you clicking on and you get an entirely different result. And it again, you, you saw how the different tools worked well with each other. And again, when you're painting, it doesn't matter quite as much which facing you're clicking on, uh, because in that case, you're painting the entire block. But as you saw, there were some good shortcuts, like the whole front here. I was able to paint in just two clicks and then delete after the fact. So anyways, uh, so let me know if there are any other projects you'd like to see. And uh, please enjoy the rest of your day.